Um, do I need to call back to order since we recessed? Just reconvening. Okay, we officially reconvening at 7.15 p.m. Okay, I believe we're on item five. So um, can I get a motion from the Board of Education to approve the minutes of the March 18th, 2024 business meeting and the April 1st, 2024 workshop meeting? So moved. Back up. Three moves, 10 seconds. Thank you. Kerry Pavisich. Aye. Ken Dawson. Aye. Cheryl Fuller. Aye. Thank you. Jenny Hagstrom. Aye. Eric Caston. Aye. And Don Renner. Aye. Motion carries. Item six. Julie, do we have any? Uh, no, sir. Papers? Okay, so I think we can skip all of the guidelines. Seven. Hank. And I'm actually going to turn it over to Ryan. Hi, everybody. Um, so uh, last time I was here, I presented for two hours. And um, <laughs> that was a long time, right? Yeah. My hair grew several inches during that presentation. <laughs> so um, I, I was asked to do, maybe do a little bit more of an overview <clears throat> um, rather than sort of getting into the weeds of all the numbers. But again, I just want to emphasize that all of the numbers from the data are posted in the board docs. So if you'd like to see any of like the raw data, um, that is all there. So, um, and then another thing that I just wanted to point out is that while it is a hybrid block sur spring survey, and you can see the number of people that participated, um, students are up quite a bit. Um, families are about half of the families that were from last spring, and staff is a little bit down, mostly because T99 isn't on an alternate schedule, so we didn't um, send it to T99. Also, the support staff felt like the questions were mostly teacher driven, um, and so that also accounts for some of the numbers with the staff. Um, and then when you get the results, especially in the free response section, you get a lot more than just about the survey. Um, and so um, you will uh, sort of, when I talk about how we combine all of the information and how things sort of uh, get to the top or seem as less of a concern, it's because there are so many topics that come up that maybe I didn't ask a direct question about that come out in those responses. <clears throat> so just to connect to Dina, uh, our strategic plan um, about community um, building, uh, fostering belonging and making sure that we're um, meeting the needs of everyone. Uh, the survey results um, that came in I wanted to start off with talking about what we did with the survey results last time. And so I'm just going to start off with changes that we've made based on the feedback from last year to this year. Um, one structural change that we made was fourth period, um, moving it to the start of the day. There was a couple of reasons for that. Um, if you remember, the sea lunch was a hot topic last year. Um, and so that really facilitated a change also for junior and senior students who felt they were um, being neglected because they don't have the ability that like the fifth and sixth period peers um, that we moved it to the beginning of the day so that they could do a late arrival um, instead of an early release. Also, we moved the announcements into access. Most of the other changes were curricularly based or intervention based. And so I'm just going to highlight a few of them um, that uh, it came up about uh, last year we were talking about uh, late arrival, early dismissal, who's eligible. So we tightened up the procedures to make sure that um, it was for juniors and seniors in good standing. Also, we added some optional courses, um, SAT prep course um, that we offered during resource. And then also our drone certification course um, is going on actually at North right now. Um, some of the fun things that came out of that, I'm attending a drone course tomorrow um, based on like, you know, to kind of keep the drone going. I thought I needed to learn a little bit more about drones myself, so I'm going on a, a PD myself tomorrow. But also some of the, t uh, the English department asked me to do a prep class or f well, prep class uh, for their staff about the SAT. Um, also, uh, Nicole Promios and um, Michelle Davis also invited me into their classrooms and I did some co-teaching with them um, specifically for their students for SAT prep. So that was, uh, it was nice to see that the SAT prep class just wasn't for the students that signed up for it during resource, but it expanded into the classroom. We also expanded support and guided study and guided resource for our students who may be struggling in the schedule. And a lot of the changes were made specifically around access, reorganizing the schedule for consistency, um, limiting some of our non-required lessons. Um, we added more student support with the past days. Um, and really this year, um, next slide, 
uh, we expanded student choice and access. Um, that every Thursday now um, we have student choice, um, unless like for example tomorrow at South I think there's a severe weather drill instead. Um, but uh, staff really <clears throat> wanted something consistent that they can go to, so that they could look at their past days differently than they look at their student um, the student choice days, whether or not they're going to work with a smaller group of kids versus um, a larger sort of group. Um, support for students on student choice days. Um, we've increased student staff competitions. I'm sure um, you know, you've heard about that. Hank's um, glorious emceeing of our, um, our academic one. We have softball coming up. It's uh, recently a staff member from North has decided, has said, if you pair me up with a PE teacher, I will help lead this next year. Um, so um, if there are any PT, PE teachers at North watching, I reach out to me, um, I, I have a pair for you. Um, that uh, we also have been maintaining the, the offerings that were already indicated from students that they liked. We student, uh, uh, the comfort dogs, school spirit, um, and then also uh, both principals have increased their access um, for with their not only staff but with students for, stu for feedback. And finally, I actually left this off. Hank reminded me about it. Um, this was such a hot button issue. I can't believe I left it off. Um, I think it was something like 88.9% of the staff felt like there needed to be something about phones, or it was 90 something. It was a, a huge number. Um, and so uh, we did um, change that uh, policy uh, right to start the year. So here's a breakdown of the student and family response rate. Um, th there was a question asked me about the families and students being the same number. It's hard to say the number of families versus the number of students. I sort of just equalized that number, knowing that some families have more than one student and some students have more than one family. Um, and so I was just tried to balance it out with that 4592. So um, you can see that 58% uh, of our students responded to the survey, and only about 9% of our families did. Last spring, um, the, a lot of the family responses were, uh, please ask my student, they are there every day. <laughs> um, or uh, I ask the teachers and the students, they know more about this than I do. Um, and so I'm not super surprised at the number there. Um, but then there's the free response breakdown. 224 students responded with a free response and 121 families, which represents 8% or 28% uh, of the respondents there. I, I also put the, the, um, the number of uh, free response overall, that that 224 responses for student represents about 5% of the voices of students um, and about 2.6% of the families. Across the bottom, I did the breakdown of where um, their comments fell. Um, you can see with other comments, that's higher than it is typically, um, that there was more about outside the schedule comments um, from families and students this year than there was <laughs> last year, so that number is higher. Also something um, interesting to point out, um, student concerns is up for staff and it's up for families, but for students it's pretty low. Um, that they, you know, when it asks about like uh, comments uh, with what they're concerned about, they'll either identify something very specific or they... Ah, I wasn't sure if that was thunder for a second. Um, or uh, they'll give a very specific answer, like, please just go all black, or um, I like the schedule, or why can't we have late start? Um, that they'll get very specific. And so you can see prefers one schedule over the other. Sometimes the student's response might only be four or five words, um, and it will be like very targeted to that. Um, or they'll say something about access or resource resource doesn't seem to be much of a concern for students, although you can see in the results later that it is more of a high concern um, for some of the other groups, specifically the adults. Um, although we've cut down the amount of time that there's a video in a lesson, that still comes up in the survey results. Um, and so uh, for 
access um, specifically talking about the lessons and the video involvement in it um, that that still comes up as a concern so you can see that that number really hasn't changed since last year Sorry. oh okay good um, staff so um, we had 95 uh, staff members respond to the free response, which is about one third of the respondents from the staff or 22% of the staff overall. And you can see the breakdowns here. Um, when the staff responds, they're being far more specific with their responses. Um, and so you can see that there isn't a specific column that talks about prefers one schedule over the other because in their comments they're saying very specifically what their concern is or what they like about the schedule or um, other comments. This number is also higher than typical because there was a lot about grading procedures or um, uh, late work procedures or just kind of other things, uh, collaborative time, things like that. Um, and so you can see that that kind of spreads out with instructional concerns and then other comments being the main focus of what the staff commented on. Now, I don't want to, uh, I'm not trying to say that there wasn't concerns about the schedule. For sure, the there were staff members that did. But you'll see them under workplace concerns and instruction concerns rather than a specific one because they are being specific about what it is in the schedule. The next slide, um, in order to give a higher view of uh, the range of concerns, instead of getting into the numbers, which again are posted online um, under the board docs, um, I took what the uh, Likert scale questions, the um, concerns and benefits, and the free responses, and kind of collated them into what the level of concern was. You can see that, for example, access programming, including student choice and support with the staff, for staff is a little bit lower than it was last year, simply because we've made more changes, I think, to access based on feedback than we've done for many of the other things, that um, either aligning it for consistency or reducing the amount of um, non-required lessons, things like that, specifically um, increasing student choice and student support with the pass has been something that the staff had been asking for and so having that roll out, that's become less of a concern. However, for families hearing about access from their students or students about the lessons, that that still stays at a mid-level concern for them. If you look sort of trend-wise, um, that the adults align more than they do with the students. Um, so, for example, the high-level concerns for staff are around student engagement, absences and accountability, loss of instructional time, overall quality of student work, the amount of free time that students have and the need for structure, and then also that sort of fatigue um, for staff and students on block days. Families, if you look around that same, same. It's those same four areas that they show as a higher level concern. Now, too much free time, you'll also notice, is a low concern for students. Um, simply because when you speak with students about it, um, some of them will say that this is the only time during their day from the minute they get up until the minute they go to bed on a block day during resource that someone's not telling them what they need to be doing. Um, and so that, lowers that level of concern for students around that time. However, it's not a low concern, it's low to mid, because we do have some students who are saying, gosh, instead of having the 78 minutes of resource, I would love that time back for some of my AP courses. And that's also reflected in some of um, the staff concerns. Um, so grade distribution trends, we kind of talk about um, when you implement a large change, you expect a little bit of a dip, right? It's <clears throat> called the implementation dip. And then after that implementation dip, you make changes and then um, the growth accelerates from there. Interestingly enough, we have not seen <coughs> a dip in our grades 
um, kind of, you can see the trends from across the way. Um, that even from two years ago to this year, so former schedule to this schedule, that there, there may be a percentage change between C to B, B to A, um, but we haven't really seen any sort of shifts in that area. Four next steps um, this year. Um, first, we looked at areas of high concern, right? Um, I you know, talked with uh, a couple of people, I talked with some people in the union, showed them my chart, um, and said, like, are you hearing anything that I'm not hearing? Um, is this you know, reflective of what you're hearing? Um, and then we determined um, what has already begun, and then what we want to sort of um, go after, and that was the areas of high concern. Originally, we thought about doing um, sort of a, an additional quick survey where we rank them in order and focus on one. But I think after talking with a lot of people, it's, gosh, these areas, I think we have to hit all of them. Um, if they're an area of high concern, why wait? Um, and so you'll see that in my recommendations here next. Then um, we identified the building administrators that would lead some of that work. Um, last summer, I led all of the different um, uh, of the different committees with administrators on it. At the end of the summer, we reflected, since this does get implemented in the building, they're like, we would love your support, but maybe we should be leading some of those groups. Um, and so um, we have flipped that so that you'll see on the next uh, couple of slides where uh, who is leading that work in each building and then what district administrator is supporting that work. And then in the future, rather than um, me updating where the different committees are at, um, that you'll hear from the people that are leading that work and obviously um, they're supporting a uh, district administrator. So we do have, I believe, yeah, there's gonna be five. So first, improving structures for academically struggling students. In the survey work, there is, um, there is a, a sort of a, I don't know, a poll on student directed required and acknowledging the the student choice aspect in building that student autonomy um, and so we are going to look um, Aaron uh, Dr. Ludwig and Sarah Corrington will be supported by Scott Wugazer in looking at our interventions um, I do put at the end that if we do have entrance and exit criteria that would restrict a student's choice during that, um, that we would um, need to make sure that that's very clear. So if a student is, right now, our guided study and our guided resource, those are optional interventions for students. Um, if a student rises to the level of it being required, um, what does that entrance and exit criteria look like as we kind of work through um, our multi-tiered system of support? The other one is developing a more timely, um, responsive building professional learning. You'll see that it comes up as an area of concern for staff. We're not um, reducing personalized professional learning. We actually started the year with personalized professional learning with the staff, and that is something that they feel very positive about. So there's no reduction in that time. Um, and however, the building-led PD um, how can we make sure that it's more responsive to what's happening in the classroom and what teachers, what tools teachers need um, is gonna be led by our two APIs, Keith and Jake. Uh, Lisa and Isabel are instructional specialists and doc Dr. Rob Lang is also going to be supporting that work. In the survey, some topics commingle um, and this is definitely one of them um, that uh, the resource time, if we think back to where it fell in the old schedule, that 78 minutes was the late start time, and that made its way into the building. Um, and I think for the staff, when they feel like it's not being utilized to the best of a student's ability, and that they may be taking that time with their friends, um, they see that as like, that is, I could be collaborating with my colleagues. Um, and so that when, the building professional learning then comes in, it's like this is also pulling on my collaboration. So that kind of works with the next um, topic, which is finding ways to increase course team collaboration. 
Um, Hank had already started some conversations about that. Um, so Gina and I will be supporting him in that work. Whether or not that's modifying um, selections during student choice, like pulling a course team here or there in order to increase some of that collaboration um, or other creative ways um, that we'll, G Gina, Hank, and I will work through with some staff. Um, we will uh, be looking at finding ways to support more collaboration time for teachers during the day. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Before you go on? So when I look at the people I see, like North and South represented as well as supported by an administrator, yeah. do the teams all work together or does like North work in their building, South work in their building, and then like how do those, like particularly for the first two books, um, that's a great how do those uh, operate? Um, so definitely for um, improving structures for academically struggling students, Sarah and Aaron both lead teams in their separate buildings. Within their buildings. separate buildings, okay. Because uh, the student needs in both buildings might be slightly different and also the structures that they're um you know kind of reevaluating or putting into place function differently okay um and some responsibilities even though it may be the same title at both buildings there, there's different slight difference in responsibilities sometimes with staff members um for the professional learning though um i know that they've already met um the the five of them together, um, starting to think through what might that look like. And so that, um, those larger meetings, the five of them meet, but then they go back to their buildings and then they're gonna be working in the buildings with their people. Um, and then course team collaborate. I actually don't, we haven't met about this one yet, so I don't know um, how we're gonna work that, but that's led from the district and will most likely be worked with through Josh um, and maybe the union administrative team. Um, so continuing work on grading procedures. Um, so last summer we started, um, and then being outside the building, some one uh, south was already in one spot, north was in a different spot about grading procedures. Um, and so as both of them uh, have started moving forward with their teams and getting feedback, um, that Courtney has begun her group, I believe they call TLC, Trojan Leadership Committee. Okay. Council, awesome. Um, and so they're doing some research and the way that they are going to move forward with that. Um, Arwen is leading her team as well. They came out with a school-wide um, system that they are now um, in the middle of revising and getting um, teacher uh, feedback on that. Um, and so, you know, I think uh, all of our goal, um, you know, we have Feldman coming in the fall. A lot of us read um, his book about um, equity and grading. Um, and so I just use a quote sort of in there is making sure that we have suffi sufficient evidence of a student's actual level of achievement to make sure that that grade book is reflected that and our policies are reflective of that. Um, and then monitoring and evaluating absences and dis discipline procedures. I think all of us have heard about the absences sort of not only within DuPage County, but also within the state, within the nation, um, uh, specifically for students and the increase in absences and the, the impact that that's had on not only student learning, but also um, just making sure that we're supporting kids and like social emotionally, um, that uh, this work is going to be looking at um, absences and discipline and making sure that we're finding ways to address discipline in common spaces, um, also a way to decrease absences. Like I said in the first one about interventions, that if there is going to be a restriction to a student's ability to make some choices on their own, um, that uh, we'll have entrance and exit criteria for whatever intervention we put to address their absences. So that is the work moving forward. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, <clears throat> it's fair to say that this introspection that we've gone through in making and implementing these changes that some of these topics are really it's hard for me to say that that's a block schedule issue like absenteeism it's not really a block schedule issue but it, it seems to me that um, this process of being introspective has led us to look at and evaluate a lot of things that could have an impact on our overall student achievement so, so I think it's a positive in that 
that aspect. And you're seeing involvement from the administrative teams and teachers who are all working together to try and find creative solutions to these issues. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I mean, I think even in some of the responses, teachers will say, I don't know if this is a schedule concern. However, I am very concerned at the quality of student work. Or, um, I'm not sure that this necessarily ties to the schedule, but we have to do something about our grading procedures. Um, but others will directly tie them together. Um, that the addition of student freedom and um, the permissiveness of anything goes in culture um, is like this may have worked 10 years ago, but I question whether it's working now. Um, that you know, post COVID, the students have changed, and so I don't know if I've felt the same way now as I did then. So that it's it is it's tough because there are some people that when they respond in the schedule, they will actually say like I don't think this is maybe tied to it, but this is a huge concern of mine. And others, it's inextricably linked. Um, so we're all sort of in different <clears throat> spots about it, for sure. Well, like absenteeism, you know, if, if, if you're saying the teachers are still very concerned that we've lost a certain amount of time and absenteeism is still a significant concern, those two can play off one another, right? Yes, for right. sure. If you don't have as much time in the classroom and you have higher absenteeism, it yes. just goes hand in hand, right? If, if students if, aren't in the classroom as much. Yes, if I am an um, AP Gov teacher and I am teaching a semester long course, my second semester, my test is the first week, first day, right? So I lose three weeks because the test is early in the AP schedule and I have a student that misses on Wednesday and, you know, uh, it was testing last week. I'm feeling absolutely extra stress right now leading up to it, for sure. It, it, there are absolute ties. What are you hearing about the persistent concern of loss of minutes? Because, I mean, there's not much we can do to correct that, right? I mean, you, we have a committee that's working on that from a solution perspective, but how do we correct that if, we're, if we stick with the block schedule? It is a misconception, right? Okay. It is when we analyze the minutes from the actual structural minutes from previous years and you factor in the number of days in which we had alternative schedules and now you factor in that we put all of almost all of that uh, inside of access, the number of minutes is fairly equal. Um, it, it definitely feels different, right? And when you factor in post-pandemic, chronic absenteeism, just the shift in all of those things, it definitely, you are losing time because now I'm having to catch up a bunch of students that missed school or, or especially last year and into this year, I just switch up my schedule. It's not the same like lesson plan flow and every, that is absolutely lost time just because you're not, uh, you're not doing it the way you were doing it before. So, um, you know, the, so there is a real, there's not a large real loss of time. There is a larger perceived loss of time and then an actual loss of time, not because of the schedule, but because of societal factors. So all of these things are to continue addressing those concerns as we go through this. Okay. What, remind me, what percentage of the staff took this <coughs> survey again? Uh, 318, 75.8. What percentage are we don't, you don't know? 75.8% uh, of the staff. Okay, 75 so that's a pretty good number. Mm -hmm. So did we administer the survey twice last year we did we and did. now it and then just once this year yeah okay so the, we did it in the fall last year and there were a lot of questions like i don't know yet i don't know yet um and so um that when we did it in the spring it was far more specific and i was able to obviously get into uh, maybe two into it um for last time but uh we only did it for this year so okay. they can have a full year so of like in the swing one of it. full year correct of 
of them? Spring to spring, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I gave it late February last year, and I gave it uh, the <clears throat> first week of, or yeah, April, March or April, I think okay. I can't remember. And it's this, the survey, you don't know who's filling it out, so it's... Yeah, it's anonymous. It's anonymous, so. Okay. I wanted to get into like statistically significant, and so I met with the AP stats teachers, and they're like, "Yeah, no, you like we, you're walking down a road. It's like it's a different group. It's a different thing. You can't tell me that these people respond to the same question." So I was only able to, in my data, show the change um, percentage, not, and then I wasn't really able to comment whether it's statistically or significant or not because it is anonymous, and I can't match last year's response to this year's response and what's the level of change the concerns and i don't remember last year so whenever we did this last i don't remember yesterday ah. um is it we're finding that there's less concerns so on the benefits and challenges uh, in that data that was near the end yeah. um the challenges have slightly dropped almost in all of the categories okay i but thought i was the yeah. benefits haven't gone up okay and so it that that's the part where you know it's um that if it's if if a staff member says like <clears throat> listen i get it this is the schedule we've chosen and i understand it's not dropping but is it improving student performance show me that information and so that that information i think is harder to do in the short term right it, when you only have like a year turnaround you don't have sort of that larger cohort data. Um, and so I think that as I sort of mentioned earlier about like the implementation dip part, that we haven't seen the dip, but hopefully we start to see that acceleration following it. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the SAT um, data only because, you know, participating in the SAT prep class and sort of like mining out that data as well. How was that received, the SAT prep course, through the, that was the resource yeah, period? Correct? Yeah, through resource. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, if you're, if you, if the student signed up for it or spoke with their parent about signing up for it, awesome. If the student's parents signed them up for it, that was a little bit more hit or miss, right? That, that, that they may come for one session and then may not come back for other sessions because they didn't want to <clears throat> Um, but the other students that signed up for it or worked with their parents to sign up for it, yeah, it was a good experience. I actually, I think I had Hannah for two weeks. <laughs> so, um, how about the pass system? Have, you know, that was one of the major focuses that yeah. we had the last time we saw you. Have you seen improvements? Yeah. So um, the the pass system functions the way we have in the past. Like we we talked about moving the pass <clears throat> system into the student choice platform so that sort of all of it is there um, but ha making sure that all the students are checking it and that, so that becomes a little bit more challenging right um, that each time we have a student choice day we'll have like what there's 2100 kids at north um, that 1600 or 1700 will remember to sign up and then we assign the other students to a space for a quiet study. Um, and so as students have been getting more used to the system, that, that the number of kids not signing up has gradually dropped. My concern with moving the passes into that system is that if they're not, if they're not looking at it to make their own choice on where they get to go, I don't have a ton of confidence until they're really used to it and seeing us using it a lot that they're going to look to see if their teacher chose them for a pass day. So we have stayed with the actual physical pass system. Um, South students are getting a little bit more used to using the student <coughs> choice platform because we're also using it for the testing center. So if you're gonna sign up to take a retake, um, that, uh, that those are done in the testing center. And so they have to sign up for a seat for the testing center. Um, so they're getting used to it there. Um, also, PE Wellness Week, they sign up for student choice for PE. Um, all of the South students will be doing that through the platform as well. I've been working with the PE department. So it's possible that we'll move the pass system into the student choice system next year. Um, that's still kind of up for consideration with uh, Dr. Ludwig and um, Sarah. <clears throat> Cool. 
So we had a lot of changes then that you brought in. Do you foresee as many based on these results? I don't. Do Do I see what? As many changes moving yeah. forward. Um, I think it. De uh, gosh, I think it all depends, right? Um, that if we. Um, with resource, I'm like continually looking for like what else can we bring in. Um, that there's uh, there's a new braiding school that's opened that I'm kind of investigating right now um, to see if we, there's like a licensure that's required for working with textured hair and specifically braiding. So I'm like, oh my gosh, that would be a cool opportunity. Um, so I'm sort of looking into that. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunities you can bring in. So uh, yes, changes like that. I think structural changes about like common time like yes i could absolutely see us you know like is there is there a place for adding in a few ch scheduled changes like quarterly to increase common time yes do i know that that's going to happen no but i can definitely see that happening um or is there going to be some type of um curricular change to something or eventually after you know a year or two is there going to be a structural change I, I think that depends on like as the results keep coming in are testing um, AP exams SAT ACT scores is that quantitative material that you'll be looking at closely to measure the successes or potential failures of this of this schedule uh, are grades more important than than yes. testing results both, both are, are valid especially for ap outcomes we only have one year of data on this schedule but we did not see any dip either in ap scores holistically or in grades holistically i don't know how much the sat uh, is impacted outside of the interventions that we're providing for students uh, that want other interventions. Um, but I mean, those are your first two kind of like canaries in the coal mine. Are you seeing a huge dip in grades? Are you seeing a huge dip in AP scores? We saw nothing in that last year, but that's just one, one data set, yeah. right? Uh, we didn't see it in semester one grades as we went through it this year. Um, but you know, as others will point out, we didn't see a huge increase in grades. But as Ryan has, has pointed out, you know, you expect when you do this disruptive of a change, especially coming off of a pandemic, <clears throat> you would expect to see a dip. Uh, the fact uh, that we have stayed steady is just a testament to our teachers and their flexibility in meeting the needs of students, regardless of, of what we do in our, our structure. So and it's the same thing in our EP scores. It just shows you what phenomenal AP teachers we have that are able to just help our students rise, you know, to the level uh, that we know that they can be at. So um, it's just something to monitor over time as we gather these data points. Um, we'll keep a close eye on uh, attendance and discipline. Those are always key pieces to look at. We're looking at getting better at tracking interventions and students' involvement in activities and athletics and all of those pieces of you know, Ryan is the director of student experience. All of those student experiences that we're doing a better job of tracking and measuring the impact on students. Um, so as time goes on, we'll get better and better data to look at as we do this. All right. Okay. Ryan, you're off the hot seat. Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, and then just one final plug, right? Uh, the, so I actually think you all may have heard that we're doing, there's a, we're bringing in um, uh, a program that's run out of Harvard, Stanford, um, and MIT, um, where they bring in instructors and they work with our kids, um, the graduate students on um, like AI and solving world problems. Um, excited to say that so far, uh, 24 students from District 99 have signed up. Um, that also then allowed me um, to, uh, for every 10 students that sign up, I get one free and reduced lunch scholarship. Um, and so I sent that out to the kids. So far, um, I've only heard back from stu two students. Um, so uh, kids have until the 19th, if you got that email from me, um, <laughs> in order to um, you know, start the next step of the process. If no other students show they're interested, then those two will also be able to get to go. So we're excited. Um, to extend some of that enrichment um, since we brought up student 
activity. So anyway, cool. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, I do want to add that program sounds amazing. And I think, you know, anyone who's working, adults, like every day, all day, people are talking about AI. So I was thrilled to see that. And I love the way the program is structured, like lots of different subject areas. So it's project based and you pick your area of interest. So it's not like go to summer school. It's sort of, anyway, I thought it was really amazing. And the rate is really reasonable. Yeah. Oh, kudos to the district for bringing mm -hmm. that. It sounds really great. Yeah. Ryan did all the work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Thank Ryan's going to yeah. tap out and Jury's going to come on up. The next topic is the third quarter financial report. Right. Well, I'll start off by saying just overall, our financial situation is going right on trend, just as what we had expected for the year. No big surprises. Um, as you can see, it's typical. We've received almost all of our revenues at this time of the year. Um, our interest earnings is significantly up um, mm -hmm. and so that's helping offset some of our expenses that are higher than what we had expected other than that um, everything looks three are you locking in like any like long-term products would so what when you when you say the interest column is that just short-term money market is it CDs what are we talking about it's there? both okay. so we use PMA uh -huh. to advise on investments and they take our cash flow statement for the year, and then uh, they give us a recommendation on how long we can invest. How long we can lock up? Mm -hmm. Just given the interest rate market, it's I mean, probably a good idea to lock up as much as we can, obviously. I'm sure PMA is doing that. Right, just, yes. Just curious, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, could you go back, because the, um, other local revenues seem to be trailing. Can you comment on that? Oh, the other local revenues? Yes. Yeah, some of that is timing. Um, one area uh, uh, that has been budgeted is for our summer camps. Both athletic directors and coaches ask if we could move the summer camp money out of that line item into their activity accounts to better um, monitor how much money they have for their camps and so that was about Kimmy what would you say about a hundred and fifty thousand or so a little more maybe two hundred thousand or so other than that um, e-rate money is in there so a lot of it has to do with timing of when we actually receive it On the expenditures, overall, it looks like we're tracking just like we were last year at this time. There are two areas, however, that we are closely monitoring. One is in the transportation area. It's our special ed transportation costs. Um, they are running quite a bit higher than what we had expected. Our, <clears throat> excuse me, our major provider is Sunrise and they have been unable to fulfill some of the routes that we have for our special needs students, especially those that go to the outplace facilities. And so we've had to use a different provider uh, and their cost structure is quite a bit higher than Sunrise's. We are looking at ways to hopefully reduce that cost next year, but for this year, we're pretty much locked into using the two providers. The other area um, that's running just a little bit higher is the supply line item. And within that line item is our utility costs and our electrical delivery costs are running a lot higher than what we had expected. Um, the increase took effect during the school year. Going forward, we will be budgeting a much higher cost, uh, but for the time being, there's nothing we can do that. 
Travis has been working with our energy consultant um, to monitor it. I think you've been in contact. <clears throat> this is an issue not just related to District 99. It's across the industry. It's not just our industry. It's, it's elsewhere. I've talked to a couple of consultants that carrier costs are skyrocketing. It's an unregulated part of electrical costs, so the carriers can just keep escalating uh, that, and that's an area where we're all feeling that. Um, there's only two ways to cut that out. One is to reduce the amount of electricity we use, um, and two is to get off the grid and to capture as much of it as local as possible. As the board is, most of the board I think is aware, we use all green energy products, um, but the, most of that is gathered elsewhere in the state and then off, there off, green energy offsets for us here. Um, that comes with the carrier cost. So one of the things we're revisiting, uh, we revisited it a few years ago, was the idea of solar. Mm -hmm. um, but at that point, it just, the cost benefits were not there. Now with these rapidly increasing carrier costs, that's uh, something that Travis has been asked to drop everything and kind of look at and see how it, how it goes and uh, what we can do there. So we're digging out those old files and starting to look at it and we'll start seeing if that is a, a possibility for reducing those costs. But really um, our fastest two growing areas our transportation and, and electricity and are somewhat out of control right now. We're working on trying to get our arms around them, uh, but that's an area of the budget that we're really concerned about as we're building next year's budget now. We locked into a, a two or three year uh, energy con contract last year about this time, and so our supply costs are really good um, compared to market. But it's the delivery costs, which have, I think, about doubled of what we had planned. So other than those two areas, everything's pretty much tracking on course. Um, and we kind of, you know, we expect to end the year like what we had projected. Our expendis expenditures are probably going to exceed our revenues by a little bit, but not, not a lot. We projected about 350,000, and I, I would guess that's probably about where we will end. Mm -hmm. I think the next slide is fund balance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Uh, the next one is trees as well. And the next one is <clears throat> our tax rates. So we received our ta tax information from the county last Monday. Um, we had to turn around quickly and get our reallocation figures back to the county by last Wednesday, which is what we did. So tonight we're just bringing, presenting to the board what our original tax rates were back in December. And then these are the actual uh, tax rates that were submitted to the county on last Wednesday. As you can see, it's pretty close. We obviously wanted to make certain we were a little higher with our request uh, so that we didn't lose any of the tax revenues. So we were about five million off you know, not too much, so it's a small adjustment. You held the transportation constant based on what you just said about transportation costs for next year? We could not exceed what our original request was for transportation. Yeah, no, but you just, you didn't change it. You kept it the same. Right. Mm -hmm. We, the clerk had adjusted it differently and had, yes. yeah. had it lower. Mm -hmm. I do want to commend uh, Jury and Tammy for turning this around so quickly. If you look at the memo that you received from the board, all the data that they received from, this, from the county 
is a handwritten report that they then need to, and I don't know why we're still writing things out like it's the 1920s, um, but they turned this around really quick for, for us. So thank you both for your work. All right. The last two items are transportation contracts. Uh, we've, we've been with First Student for 10 years now. Been that long? Mm -hmm. It has. Gosh. <clears throat> this will be the when you're having so much fun. Yeah, they, we have a really good relationship yes. with them. Yeah. Um, we will have to go out for bid next year. Um, this, so this is the last extension that we could um, actually uh, do with them. They're proposing a 6.8 percent increase. A little higher than what, actually it was a little higher when we first started, but we negotiated it down to 6.8. Still a little higher than what we had hoped for. We had hoped to keep it at the 5%, but they're going to replace 25 buses this year <clears throat> because they're getting older, and so the three, the other two districts agreed to, to you know, approve the 6.8% increase. We've been very fortunate. We've had plenty of drivers this year. Um, unlike Sunrise with the special ed, we've not had Can we share? No. We do oh. share, don't we, with District 58, don't we? We do. Yeah. 58 and 68. Yeah. We can't we share with Sunrise. Oh, no. You know, if, they're, if they're having a problem, you know, we can't. Right. Um, so, um, we're very pleased with the service and we recommend approving the 6.8% increase with first student. Now they can't um, pick up the slack for what uh, Sunrise is not able to do. They can actually we, do for some can students. we have that, is that in the contract that they will be able to provide transportation for some of our special needs students? They, they do, it's I a mean, separate. I mean if Sunrise can't meet that <clears throat> obligation, you know, are they able to do that? They do, right now, for probably about 10 students. So is that a significant increase in our rate right now because of that? Or I guess I'm, I'm saying is that in the contract at a certain rate that is? It is separate from this contract. Okay. Because that's special education transportation. Right. Which is, it's a that's a whole different rate structure. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. I, I'm trying right. to. I'm so trying to wrap my head around the fact that there are students who don't have transportation to where they need to be because Sunrise can't fulfill that ob obligation, and that. Well, they have transportation. We just go to a one of several different companies to arrange for that transportation. But are we paying? At a much greater cost. Yes, that's. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Is there any way to negotiate that price down? We're working on, yes, we're working to try to make that the best possible rate, but it's really hard to do it on the back end when you have to arrange, right. you know, but at the last minute. Uh, SASID, we, or Sunrise, we work with SASID on that, and the team at SASID, along with the business managers, have done a lot of work with the structure of that agreement and the expectations within that agreement for next year with Sunrise. Okay. to hopefully alleviate, we believe we'll alleviate some of this, and then we're putting other uh, measures in place to try to reduce our rates for those other third parties as much as possible. I'm, I, I was just concerned. But we make sure we get kids to, to well, school. Right, that's, just that's. At a much higher cost. Right, but you know, we have to look at the bottom line too. Mm -hmm. And you know, if one company can't do it for us, what, what There's just a limited number of drivers everywhere, though. I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a problem. It's complicated. Process. This is not just us. No, no. I, I, I truly understand that. And then Sunrise Tree? Yeah, so with Sunrise, they've asked for um, a 5% increase. 
um, and this would be just a one-year extension on their contract. And then with SASID, we're going to be working with the other member districts, and we plan to go out for a bid next year to see if we can come up with different ideas. A, a, a better solution to Correct. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that all takes time. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand that. I'm just yeah. concerned about our bottom line, too. Any questions on the contracts? Was both of them a year? I kind of missed that for the contracts. You said just an extension on Sunrise for a year. What was it? And for first student, one more year, too. Okay, one as well. Okay. We'll go out to bid on both of those <clears throat> next year. <clears throat> sunrise or special education transportation, we usually do in cooperation with SACID, although we'll have to have a discussion if that's how we want to continue our arrangement. And then uh, first students, obviously, us in partnership with. 58 and 68. Together mm -hmm. as a group because it's been a huge cost savings yeah. for the last 10 years. Make them pretty easy to work with, too. So mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Is Sunrise proactively looking at ways to correct their shortfall in coverage for next year? Yes, part of it. Big part of it's just the drivers, and they just have a shortage of drivers. Sasset is looking at ways that they can strategically decrease the number of routes as well. So, is there efficiencies that can be built into that with districts that share ridership to cut down on the number of, of routes? Just curious, are there any like breach clauses in the contracts that you know? If um, Sunrise is unable to fulfill its obligations and we're then required to go out and pay exorbitant costs to meet the needs that they were supposed to provide in the contract, it's a classic breach of contract. So are there any penalty clauses in these contracts that say, you know, they, you don't fulfill your obligations, you got to at least cover a portion of our increased costs? I mean, there is the language is such that it's a very small amount because then it's the difference between what the state reimburses and what that additional cost is and it has to be within a certain amount of days so it's kind of weighted on Sunrise's um, side it really hasn't helped any of the member districts this year be able to recoup we receive about 57% reimbursement from the state for special ed transportation. That comes the next year, doesn't come during the current year. So that factor has to be taken into account. Um, we, we've not been able to do anything with that clause so far this year. Can you negotiate a better that's what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Oh, you know, yeah. to go out to rebid yeah. next right. year, you yeah. can. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's if a you've got a contract history of breach. with lots of districts, so it's, unfortunately, it's not an individual contract with each individual district. So it's a SASID agreement. A mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm sure that they would be in agreement to increase the penalty we're not this would all be for discussions next year, not sure. at this point sure. with the extension. Sure. So it doesn't. Uh, oh, it doesn't help for this. For this, this is an extension, of, and we're not going out for bid right now because it is not a buyer's market. Like it is oh. likely that we would see a much greater increase than five percent if we tried to go out for a competitive bid in this market right now. Okay. So we're getting a decent rate of five percent. It would, we believe, be far greater than 5% if we were to go out and rebid and enter into a new agreement. So part of the 5% is recognizing that we have not been as well served as we would have liked to have been this past year. Yes, because they see what a yes. student got, they could have gotten that had they... Um... Not really, it's not like that, but, but same kind of concept. They know what the market is and that what our increase right now is lower than market. Okay, all right, okay, all right. So some districts have gone out 
Yeah. Too bad. And it's been ugly. It's been a really like a 20% increase. Oh. So it, this is not the market, to, right? This is not the year to go out to bid. Um, yeah, and we would rather, now that we have a better understanding of what has happened during this school year, we feel we can better craft the language for another contract okay. and protect all the districts okay. going forward. We did get a, uh, receive a concession where if we have a shared ride, we're only charged like at 50%. So we're sharing the cost of a round. So these students are ones where the, I would say for the most part, Scott, is it suburbans maybe? Sure. They're picking up the students. They're going to a house and picking up a student and sometimes then they're driving to the facility. Sometimes they can pick up two students one from our district, one from another district, share that route. But this is not a bus, mm -hmm. picking right. up a lot of students. Right. right. And there's just, uh, we, the collaborative, du, how big is the is collaborative DuPage? Is it beyond It's du not all of DuPage. It's not it's, all DuPage. Yeah, it's, I'm just okay. 13. Oh, oh, of the, of the member? How many districts in DuPage? Oh. Part of the Sassid. I should know this. I've been oh, sitting of, in the. Of Sassid, I think there's. Well, is that the cooperative or whatever there, collaborative that we purchased? 13. Oh, that was my, my first guess was close. We had 10 districts in this agreement for busing, and now we're down to eight. Because some went out to bid. All right. Any other questions on the con transportation contract? All right. This is just uh, an FYI. Uh, the Parent-Teacher Advisory Committee uh, has been revised from April 29th to May 13th. Uh, this is just for public knowledge that we, due to scheduling conflict, had to move that. We checked with our board members that are attending, and they can make it. FOIA requests, we've had them, we've filled them, they're on the website, <clears throat> the public to review. Okay, item number eight, the consent agenda. Before the board votes on the consent agenda, is there any agenda item a board member would like to pull out of the consent agenda for further discussion? Hearing none, can I get a motion for the Board of Education to approve the consent agenda as presented, which includes A, personnel report appointment certified, leave of absence certified, appointment classified, transfer of position classified, leave of absence classified, B, personnel report, resignation certified, resignation classified, C, resignation agreement, tenured teacher, D, March treasurer's report and March financial pages, E, treasurer's services through June 30th, 2027, F, student trips, G, resolution of appointment to DuPage Area Occupational Education System Board of Directors, and H, acceptance of donation, District 99 Education Foundation. Moved. Second. Mm -hmm. Aye. Ben Dawson. Aye. Shaw Fuller. Aye. Penny Hagstrom. Aye. Eric Aston. Aye. And Don Runner. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you to the foundation for a donation of one thousand two hundred sixty dollars for education grants. Uh, item number nine: recommendations for action. Um, can I get a motion for the Board of Education to approve the final 2023 tax rates as presented? So moved. Second. Common theme, Terry moves, Ken seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Cavisage. Aye. Ken Dawson. Aye. Cheryl Fuller. Aye. Jenny Hagstrom. Aye. Bear Kasten. Aye. And Don Renner. Uh, aye. Uh, motion carries. Item B. Can I get a motion for the Board of Education to approve the Sunrise Southwest LLC one-year contract extension as presented? So moved. Second. <laughs> Kara moves and Jenny seconds. Thank you. Kara Kasten. Aye. Jenny Hagstrom. Aye. Ray Papasich. Hmm. Aye. Ken Dawson. Aye. Cheryl Fuller. Aye. And Don Renner. Aye. Motion carries. Item C. Can I get a motion for the Board of Education to approve the first student one-year contract extension as presented? So moved. Second. Oh, go ahead. Ken moves. Jenny seconds. Thank you. Ken Dawson. Aye. Jenny Hagstrom. Aye. Craig Pavisich. Aye. Kara Kasten. Cheryl Fuller. Aye. And Don Renner. Aye. Motion carries. 
Item 10, any old business, Hank? No. Any new business? No. no. Oh, I just. Okay. Okay. So is um, the community meeting tomorrow night? Yes. Yeah. So. We're at South High at yeah. 630. The, it, it's 630. I yeah. didn't meeting. write the time down. The community school board. Where are we at, Jill? It's tomorrow at South. In, in the community room itself. Okay. It's 30 to 8. I figured I'd show up and just find Jill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The second reception of visitors. Julie, do we have any comments? No, sir. Item number 13. Jenny, can I get a report on LEND? I don't have anything new. Yeah, it's just legislative updates that are going out. I continue to update the board when I update the staff in my weekly updates. So there'll be an update tomorrow from both LEND and IASA. There's a lot of, there's a lot, but not a lot of legislation moving. So there was 10,000 bills proposed. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're seeing a much smaller number than those move forward, um, but there's some big ones in there. Uh, we're hoping that dual credit moves forward, and that helps us uh, with our dual credit enrollment here. There's a, uh, that's a, a bill that Lend and I have been very active with uh, as part of my subcommittee that Gene also serves on. Um, but there's a, a lot of churn still right now that we're keeping an eye on. 10,000 bills, is that the annual number? That's so no. That's, that's the amount this year, actually, which uh, it's not normally that big, but but it's big this year. Um, Sherelle and or Hank, can I get a report on SASA? Um, we're starting to make the transition of the new executive director to Kim Dreyer. Uh, things are going really well with that. Uh, we're going to keep uh, Jim and Jimmy uh, around as uh, kind of supporting her and mentoring her next year. She makes that transition. Uh, the contract, uh, two-year contract was approved at the last meeting, so we have that uh, stability for the next couple of years as we move forward. Uh, and they're in hiring season just like we are right now. So uh, things are, are looking up for SASA. Kim Dreyer will be an excellent um, choice for that. I agree. Uh, she was here in District 99. For those of you who don't know, but uh, she was in our special ed department, and uh, I, I think uh, Scott has taken her position. So, um, good addition. Terry, can we get a report on the District 99 Education Foundation? Yes. Um, it. Uh, let's see. We have decided to. Um, start the Mark McDonald scholarships next year because of um, we need to gather a few more funds. So if you know of anybody who would like to donate to that, please let them know. Um, let's see, we are, we are going to be going to the AVID um, uh, banquets at North and at South and we are joining the National Association for Education Foundations. So that's about. You mentioned AVID's banquet? AVID. The AVID program? AVID, okay. Yeah, yeah. We're a, we're a sponsor of that. Okay, okay. Um, and, uh, and it's really a very good program. I know we've, we've talked about it before, but um, uh, it helps uh, students that. Uh, are in need to work towards uh, going to college and helping them on field trips and different things. So um, we like to see our students succeed. So that's where we are with that. All right, Ken, do you have any report on IASP? Nothing, nothing new. Okay. We should have dates for next year's, I just heard this week, one yeah. of the things that the superintendents requested was that we get the dates for next year now rather than in the fall so we should have dates pretty soon for division meetings next yeah i think we'll have them by next month for sure yeah. terry was saying yeah i think uh i think we've set the date for the fall one okay already but um you know what i have it written down in my we'll get them out as soon as they're official. next calendar <laughs> but that was a, a thing that we asked for that before we started building our calendars and we appreciate that uh that the division heard that and is going to get them out early. Yeah, I think one of them is uh, the first one is in October. 
so, rather than November, I th if I remember correctly. And there's already a lot in November. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with the um, conference. You yeah. Know. Okay, uh, upcoming upcoming board meetings are um, May 6, 2024, workshop meeting at the ASC at 6.30 p.m., and then May 20th, 2024, a regular business meeting again at 6.30 at the ASC. Uh, before we adjourn, uh, I'm also going to uh, do this for each of the villages, is to recognize them for their assistance in increasing the significance of our student recognitions this year. We've heard from quite a few students that, you know, by our villages recognizing first and second place finishers, by naming a day after our students and doing all of that, uh, has had a huge profound impact uh, on our students and our families uh, of getting that additional recognition. Uh, it is something that they just chose to take on their plates and it, I didn't realize at the beginning how much of a lift it is to put together those proclamations. Jill and I have worked to try, worked with them to try to make it easier, but it has been something that they have just, out of the kindness of their hearts, taken on to help us better recognize kids in our community. I plan on uh, sending a, a note of thanks to both villages for all that they've done here, uh, but it's been pretty cool and the, the kids have commented uh, how impactful that is. So I just wanted to publicly recognize uh, Al Sostenich at Woodridge and Dave Fieldman at uh, the Village of Downers Grove where our contacts have just been very giving of their time to make that happen. Here, here. Do you get any feedback after these events from parents, from students? The principals have heard. The principals are? Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> so our two um, DECA students who shaped, like were state champions, mm -hmm. so there was one proclamation that said it was their day, it listed both of their names as their day, and we handed it to them. I think Hank said even when he handed it, he... <laughs> I was like, oh, how are you going to split this baby? <laughs> <laughs> and so instantly the students the next day, they were so excited and so grateful, but they were like, can we please have another one? Like we each really, really want one. It was so important to both of them. So I just think that's a great data point and how impactful it really is. And we were just chatting with a parent at the end before we came in about just this is so important to you. Um, and just doing it at this level is a big deal that I think recognizes the big deal that it truly is. So thank you. I know I know it's extra time, um, but I would I have no other way I want to spend my time. Yes. Um, than being here celebrating yes. students. So I, I think, think they make an effort really to be cool. here. They're they really so do. busy, yeah. and I was very yeah. impressed with all the football conflicts, how yeah. many of yeah. that team was still there. It's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they see that we see it's a big yeah. deal. Coordinated sweatshirts. Yeah. yeah. I know. I love, love it. Love it. Yes. Yeah. Were we able to get a second <laughs> one for them? Yeah, I <laughs> Arwen has it with her right now. I have now. it with me right now. So. <laughs> great, great. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. great. It happens, so we're, we're just really appreciative, and it's, it's like one of our biggest jobs is to celebrate students, and so this just really amplifies that for us. And do they read the proclamation at their village meetings? I, I think no, I don't believe. I think the they do the work on the back end. We do the recognition on the front. Okay. Well, I just thought you know sometimes the it, the entire village would hear. No, we did, we discussed all of that as to just the mechanics of everything, and we felt the recognition was best here. Okay. You know, and they're they're doing the efforts to to carry that recognition forward. We're also dia we've been dialoguing with them all year about what the long term recognition is for first place finishers mm -hmm. in in the the village. So those are ongoing discussions um, of how we can somehow recognize long-term those first place finishers. So mm -hmm. still still in discussion. Okay. Okay. What I love about this, it may be one of those small motivators for this. For other people. Yeah, to, to do well. Who would have thought it was such a big deal? But I, I love this part of the meeting. Now. Well, and Nala was at one. What'd you think, Nala? Was it, was it worth the recognition? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, nothing else? That's it. Uh, then we need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, I'll take Terry moved and Kara second. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We are adjourned.